Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think it's really interesting, exciting time for real estate industry. Uh, it could be both for buyers and sellers. You might be able to connect some of my slides, which I will be presenting today. Uh, I will share my experience on building a real-time recommendation system on the e-commerce website, which I was working previously. And before I go in details, do you know on average how many properties a serious buyers explore before buying a property? property. Do you have any, ex any idea? Okay, cool. So on average, actually people explore around 250 listings. Listings is called the property and go for inspection around 30 on properties and also be on the platform active for almost, ten, almost seven months. So it's the average. It could change for individuals. You can do a little bit of plus minus to find out your exact timing. Cool. Hey, oh, my name is Kamal. I'm working as a lead data consultant with CMD. Um, I have also worked previously in Singapore and on Malaysia as a lead data science and AI. At the same time, with a local mining company as a lead machine learning engineer. Uh, my experience uh, involves like multiple industry. I'm also work with the, one of the university R&D research group here with. On a local university. So, throughout this presentation, actually, I will share some of the insights. So, first thing is that the reasons for visiting real estate platform, then the role and importance of recommended system, challenges for real time recommended system, and the, some of the techniques we followed. It could be unique for different industry, but how we solve, I will share that experience and also the knowledge with you. And finally, the, how we implement a real time recommended system for our website. Yeah, so the motivation, definitely the motivation is the preference and find the suitable properties. When you come to a real estate properties, real estate website, uh, we find, want to find that whatever we're looking for. I took a, two screenshots here. One is for Airbnb. I mean, everybody, most of us will know Airbnb, but you might not know that it's a real estate plus as well. And another one is that uh, realestate.com, which is quite popular here in Australia. So when we are talking about suitable properties and based on our preference, that's where the, our recommendation system comes into the picture, right? So role of recommendation systems. So mostly what happens, uh, we want to find the properties uh, easily and without much difficulties with easy, efficient property discovery. At the same time, we want to receive a uh, tailored recommendation or personalized recommendation on our properties to help us real estate experience. I have a better real estate experience, actually. So um, what actually I was going to highlight, right? uh, previously when people used to buy anything a, from someone else ha has bought it and they say, hey, this is a popular product, then you can just go for buying that product or buying that thing. But now it has changed. Like everyone has their specific preference. And then you want to go for specific uh, preference based on your interest, what you like. The, the challenge is here now, we have this long tail problem. I will explain what is long tail problem in property context. But here it is, uh, when you have lost a lot of listings, a lot of properties, most of the thing is general properties, general listings, you visit those properties. But a significant amount of properties actually also available, but uh, you cannot find it. It's basically in the specific interest. So this is called a long tail problem in generic sense. From uh, property context, uh, you said that recently, just before the, when I was preparing the slide, I did a quick search. Uh, I was looking for two bedroom house apartment in Perth. Perth is really small area. There's not too many properties compared to other area, other city. So if you see that, we have around 45 pages. So per page has around 25 listings. Altogether, 1,200 listings. It's a lot, right? So how many of these pages you'll be visiting? So based on our experience, most of the cases, three pages, four, and five very limited. That's what we have when we track this thing. So it's still there 45 pages and around probably more than 1,000 listings is there. Those are could be potential uh, preference for you, but we are not able to provide you the right listings if you do this searches such a way. So that's one long tail problem. And why we should provide a recommendation? Around 45% uh, people actually agree that hey, they are willing to get deceive personalized recommendation and based on their previous search or historical search. Yeah. So 
there's another interesting problem which we call paradox of choices. So when you will be presented with too many choices, which the case is just now I was showing, then you will not be buying that product or property. There was an interesting research also has been conducted. So that's called it jam experiment. Uh, the two terminology, interesting terminology called analysis, paralysis, at the same time, buyer's remorse, which has been also suggested by Barry. So what I want to highlight is jam experiment. One of the, if you work with a website or A-B testing environment, definitely you know that there's a two group, treatment group and non-treatment group. So one treatment group, they were presented with 25 choices or 24 choices. And then definitely a lot of choices, a lot of people came, but only 3% people has bought this product. Then other side, you have only six choices, which is based on the preference, probably different geographic area, different uh, preference. You know that like when you do the market research, you find out this is the product good for these people. Then you provide this only six choices. It attracted less people, 40%, but see that 30% people has been bought. So that's also a good problem for our property index, property context actually. So as I mentioned, and we need to provide a really personal recommendation. There are few uh, popular recommendation system. Uh, one is the content based, then collaborative, filtering, also hybrid recommendation. I put a uh, simple analogy diagram here just to give you a quick idea what those things means. And the problem is when you think about property context, this is, this doesn't really fit well. The first thing is uh, that these models are static. It will not change. Uh, unless you retain the model. So basically, if someone comes in, you will receive the same recommendation over and over time. And the two problems which I just highlighted, long tail problem and paradox of choices. This needs to be addressed as well. So I, wa I want to give a message here just to share the challenge of real-time recommendation system. Think about Netflix. When you go for a movie, watch movie, you have a specific preference. Probably you'll be looking at drama movie or scientific movie, right? And song. Definitely you have some specific preference. It will not change really uh, within, within minutes or within hours. And same goes for other product. And what happens when you come to the property platform, it's like, like I'm, I have a preference of four bedroom house and two be bathroom, and probably my budget is X. So when you start looking for it, suddenly you find new properties, which could be three bedroom house. And then within a minute, your preference is changing. Even when it's your location of preference is changing. So that when it comes to the property context, it, your preference, your choices changes in minutes, sometimes in seconds as well. So we have to address it in our recommended system. It, I mean, we couldn't address it. If we don't address it, then the, eventually people will not buy that product. Or we will not be able to get the right choices, which is they are looking for it. So that's interesting talk. This uh, which has been, I mean, this is a TED talk actually by uh, Dan. Uh, if you are interested how recommendation system work, how human psychology works, definitely look into this uh, TED talk. It's a summarized version of his book, Predictably Irrationally. Um, so I'm not suggesting that you should not, uh, I mean, following the recommendation. It helps, but it's good to know that how it works, how our human psychology uh, make the decision based on the different uh, aspect, different situation. Yep, then there comes the real-time recommendation system which I was saying that you need to have a real-time recommendation system in property context. So property exploration is jarring. So the thing is, when you are exploring, if there is a blocker, then the journey will not be complete, right? So there is a step-by-step. Step. You will look, start looking for properties, then you step by step go with this. If there is a break, then it won't happen. So that's why we need to have a right choice of preference. At the same time, the paradox of choices, which I mentioned, not too many, at the same time, not too few choices. Then eventually your decision system will be uh, interrupted, right? So challenges which I mentioned, this is quite common challenge for every, every recommended system, but how you are solving it, that's, that's really important. One is the algorithm, which algorithm you want to use uh, for low inference at the same time semantic similarity. I will explain more on semantic similarity in coming slides. Then is the long tail problem, which I explained, and paradox of choices. And definitely implementation and production is a AI machine learning model for recommended system is another significant challenge, which I will be also sharing with you guys. Uh, just uh, stay with me. What actually I was thinking, so when you think about, so let's decide you start thinking about it, we'll go for a gym exercise, uh, probably starting from next week, or you want to go for regular exports. The, the buying pattern, what you'll be buying. 
probably you will be buying a t-shirt than shorts, than a shoe, cap, and bottle. Think about each of these products as a word. And then those are a sequence of words, right? And you can prepare it as a sentence. Definitely you can read it in a sentence, right? So let's go back to property context. The users, I, I put it in four users, and then those users are by visiting different properties, and every word, properties we can present as a word, right? So we have now four sentences here. If we represent the, the technique I just mentioned in previous slides. So now we have millions of users, sometimes hundreds of users. So how many sentences do we have? We have hundreds of users, or sometimes millions of users. So millions of sentences we have. So how we are using it? If you think about like any professional or experienced property agent will not give you or show you the right property at the right moment. When you come to him, he will profile you, try to see what makes right preference, what, what is the right choices for you, then you will go for step by step, showing ultimate property, probably a final stage, so that you have something to compare, right? So that's why the sequence of events is important. So the algorithm we use for this one is called what to vector embeddings. This is not a really new algorithm. I think uh, chat GPT and last language model, we all know about it, but what to vector is one of the most successful language model when the attention transformer technique or those things didn't came into the picture. But this is one of the successful model. And we use this technique to solve our business problem. And how we solve this problem? Then two other problem which I mentioned, uh, long tail problem and parallels of choices, right? So Amazon and also Netflix, they make it. So you have a lot of listings, a lot of movies, and also a lot of choices. And you want to provide that right choices for right users. So what, how you can solve it? Make it available and help user to find it. So you can find any song, any music. And the second thing is paradox of choices, which comes with the two technique called exploitation and exploration. So exploitation is based on your historical behavior, which I was just showing, uh, different transaction property you are visiting. I will explain how you solve that exploration problem, but what you need to have, you need to have a right balance between these two, uh, long tail problem and also the paradox of choices when you design it, your model or you train a model. So that's what would happen, like our technique, the way we design, or how we model our technique, is solve multiple problems, one is semantic similarity. I will not go for detail and explaining of semantic similarity and contextual understanding, you guys can get the word and under, go back and Google it to, to have a better understanding. The task of a sequence of events, which is really important as I mentioned, right? And cold start problem is one of the common problem for any recommendation low inference. I will ex you'll get the idea that why low inference is really important from this real-time recursion perspective. Yep. So now, as I was mentioning, our which solved three problem, which is more on before the production and the machine learning model, you have the model, everything ready. Now in implementation perspective, when you develop any recommendation system, this is like very ideal cases. It's not probably property. You have user's behavior, sorry. And you are tracking those user's behavior then you have a streaming platform, it could be Kafka or any other uh, message uh, platform. And then store those data, provide recommendation, which I highlighted here as a one and two. Those are the two challenges I will be sharing in the coming slides. So when it comes to user activity, uh, I will explain like in Netflix or even I mean Spotify, you provide a rating or a movie or even when you're releasing music, there's some implicit kind of uh, indication that this is what I like. But in property website, there is no indication of that. On top of that, 95%, uh, more than 95%, it, it could differ, 90% is anonymous users because they don't register with the platform. They come for a short period of time or they want to register with the platform most of the cases. So what we did as a data engineer, we track acti every activity of users. So when you land it on our, we call it listing detail page, we track, hey, he landed. Then if you are start exploring some images of the listing, then we track this, another event. And then if you look into this other nearby amenities or facilities, and then put the descriptions, you have a description here, you start looking for descriptions. And also finally, you contact the agent. So all those events, it, it could differ for different uh, business. We rank it and then do the candidate generation. That's what our rating, that's what your preference. Like, hey, how engaged, this user was on this property. Then second thing is, we have this model, everything is ready. I mean, we want to serve it for production. But the challenge is, 
when you provide a recommendation, usually any embedding model who work on deep learning models, it will take three to five seconds. Sometimes it could be more, and sometimes it could be less, but on average, our model was giving three to five seconds, taking five seconds. And front-end say that if you give me any response within, after 500 milliseconds, we'll just ignore it. Okay, that's, we have everything ready. We, all the work has been done, all data and the data analysis, but people, they are not using our model because our response is not within 500 milliseconds also. So this is another challenge, definitely need to solve. Otherwise, they will not use it. That's, that's their front-end SLA or the requirement we need to fulfill. Then another interesting problem is property listing is expiring, right? Property platform or e-commerce platform is a subscription model platform. So two things happen. If property is sold out, they will take it down. Or property, sometimes something happens, they can just take it offline. At the same time, when agent subscribe to that platform, if the subscription expires, all the listings will be expired. So what happens, the one second before that listing could be there, next second will be nine. And if you still provide the recommendation, people click on it, it landed to the four, OP, four pages, they will feel, okay, what is wrong with this recommendation? Why are they are recommending four or four pages? So that's, that's the challenge, is, and it could change within a second. So what I say that three main challenges, which is from implementation perspective. So how we solve it, I'll go one by one. First thing is the we build our recommendation system, which is user landed on the website, we get their activity, push it on the recommended system, and some of the data we are using on our own data warehouse, model training, retraining is happening, those are things. But it was giving us within three to five seconds. The website team was not using us, ignoring all the responses. So first challenge we solve is we edit a real-time database, and we preface the recommend. Whenever user landed on the website, we make a call to recommended system, preface the data, and cache it on our real-time database. So when user land it, they get the data real time, and real time database is really fast in millisecond, like 10, 15 milliseconds. Sometimes when you can get the recommendation. So we solve one problem. The, still the problem is active listing. Some of the listing is expired, but we are getting providing the recommendation. How we solve it? So we used another database, which is called Elasticsearch database, which is the active listing database we mentioned. Yeah, definitely if you have any questions around that, I will be later, I can explain what was the reason to have those database, DynamoDB, and also Elasticsearch, which is almost similar data, document view databases. So what happens, any listing expires, we have a separate event that trigger on database, create a flag that this listing is inactive or is expired. So then same process, we fill the data, but when we're writing it, recommend it, it get the active listing only, then cache it on this, our real-time databases. So we get the data and we solve the problem of uh, expert listing, right? So the second problem, or last problem, which I was seeing, do you remember that paradox of choices I was explaining? Exploitation and exploration. So you should have this balance. So if you just use some hysterical behavior, you will not give him that enough opportunity to explore new properties, which is also important. So exploration thingy, what we, how we solve? We, we have the API and we know that, that user's price preference also location preference. Based on that, we don't randomly pick, it depends. Like we have the recommendation card. Usually recommendation card provide listing uh, four to five, or if you use a, a search result base, which is around 25 or 30 listings. So it depends on that. We get uh, randomly one or two listings and attach it with the recommendation. So that's how we solve that exploration problem as well. Yep. So yeah, that this is how we develop our end-to-end -end recommendation system. Uh, there is few other technical details which I have not highlighted here. Like, uh, like if it's shown to recommendation system, uh, we did not show it or provide the same for listing as a recommendation, then click through rate has improved significantly. That was a really, really improved, significant improvement in our click through rate. And, and this was like quite, quite some time ago. At that time, the ML ops just start getting it. We build our own ML ops platform and we publish, I publish a machine learning blog as well on this how to develop a machine learning model there. Uh, you, can, you can look into it. Uh, I think I am still on time, right? Okay, cool. So yeah, that's all from my side. I think, thank you for everything.